live stream, duh. Erev Tov, Lekulam. Manishma. Woo! You thought I was going to present in Hebrew, didn't you? Yeah. No? Yeah, okay, I tried. Anyways, hi, I'm Amy, and I am a Chinese American Jew ish, emphasis on the ish, um, Israeli. And today I'm going to tell you the unlikely love story of a girl and a country. Yes, this is the story of me, and I am in a mad love affair with Israel. I only have about six and a half minutes, so I'm going to try to get to as much of it as I can. We'll start at the beginning. I was born and raised in Sacramento, California. My mother is Chinese American, and my father is Jewish American. And in Israel, it's very normal for you to identify yourself as Jewish or not Jewish, but... In America, when I would tell people, when they asked me, what are you? Oh, I'm half Chinese and I'm half Jewish. It was pretty confusing. And it was pretty confusing because, to be honest, I don't think I even knew what that meant. And neither did anyone else. But based on how I felt, that was how I chose to answer the question. So I grew up in a very mixed household. As I said, my parents are mixed faith. No religion was ever pushed on my brother or me. Um, I celebrated Christmas with the Christmas tree and Chinese New Year's with my mom's family. And with my dad's family, we celebrated some kind of Hanukkah and a very revisionist form of Passover that my self-proclaimed atheist Jewish grandmother approved. <laughs> um, I played in Asian basketball leagues and I went to Catholic high school. You could say accurately that I really didn't know what it even meant to be Jewish. In fact, my first Jewish memory, I didn't even know that it was Jewish until many years later. When I was a kid, my grandmother took my brother and I to visit our great-grandmother at her nursing home, where there was some kind of group gathering happening, and they were singing songs, and I didn't really know what was happening. I was bored, I was a kid. Uh, and then after, I remember we ate challah, Sorry, spoiler alert. We ate bread, and I tasted what was the most disgusting meatball I had ever had in my life. So fast forward to university, where my life became heavily Jewish very quickly, and I'm attending Shabbat services pretty regularly. Only then did I realize that this group activity that I had attended was Kabbalat Shabbat, the bread that I had eaten was challah, and what I thought was a meatball was actually gefilte fish. <laughs> I definitely never made that mistake again. <laughs> so like I said, in college my life became very Jewish very quickly. Um, and in college is also where I would say that Israel kind of found me in the form of an Israeli shiliak, Amos. I know you're all thinking, she fell in love with her shaliak and they got married and she moved to Israel. No, I'm so totally single. <laughs> no, 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 what happened was Amos brought this movie about Israelis to my college campus and it was protested. Now, I personally was completely shocked. I had no idea that there were people that hated Israel so much that they would come ruin our movie night and so the next day, I called Amos, completely flustered, saying, Amos, I demand that you meet me for coffee, and you're going to explain the entire Israeli-Palestinian conflict to me. He laughed in my face because he told me it would probably take a few coffees. But this was the moment that I can identify as the spark that kind of lit my burning love affair for Israel. I immediately started inhaling news and information, and I became the vice president of the Hillel. I co-founded the Israel group on my campus. I started to go to protests, to counter protest anti-Israel, what I would call like crazy people. Um, and I changed my major so I could get a Judaic studies minor. So once I effectively became the face of Israel activism and Jewish students on my campus, it's okay, we can, we can laugh a bit about it. Like, it's a little weird. I was the face of Jewish students in Portland. Um, no, but now that I'm the face of this, like, what's my next step? 
birthright. Mm -hmm. Yes. So finally, I'm going to get to touch and taste and smell and be in this land that I've been obsessing over for two whole years. And I'm going to pray at the holiest side of my people. And it's going to be like a magical Jewish Disney princess movie. And I'm going to have all of my questions answered, right? Wrong. <laughs> My organizers should have been called disorganizers. My luggage was lost on the highway. I nearly died at Masada, and I got water in my eyes at the Dead Sea. All true. So what did I decide to do next? I extended my trip for two months. But let me tell you, seriously, those were the best two months of my entire life. I traveled around a bit, and then I sublet an apartment in Tel Aviv. I went on mini adventures every day. I went to the Shuk every day. I went to the beach every day. And I met Israelis and I talked to them. And as my stomach was filling with shakshuka and Aroma Ice Cafe, my heart was filling with Ahava, a love for Israel. No. About three years ago, actually three years ago this month, I decided to take my love, my love affair with Israel to the next level. I made Aliyah. And once I made Aliyah, I really kind of had this epiphany that this whole time I had always been looking for the right way to identify myself. And really the term that I was looking for was Israeli. The great thing about being Israeli is that it really can mean so many different things. Israel is a salad, we could say, of all these different people that come from all these different places. And with them, they bring culture and their flavors and their love, even when they're yelling at each other. And I just, I don't know, I felt the need to share this with people. And that's how I started my blog, Amy and Israel, A Love Story. Oh, this is, I'm well, we're over time. Um, and that's how I started my blog, my blog, Amy and Israel, A Love Story, that recently has developed into a YouTube channel. Um, because I wanna show everyone that I am what it means to be Israeli, and you are what it means to be Israeli, and you, and you, and all of you, you're what it means to be Israeli. And maybe I'm being a bit presumptuous, but I know that because of my unique background, I have a unique experience and perspective on this place, and I want to share that with everyone. So, as much as my love affair with Israel is definitely not always milk and honey, it is always interesting, and it is always filled with Ahava. Thank you. Uh, who here in this room is Israeli? No, like, come on, I don't want hands, we're children here. Who here is Israeli? Okay, awesome, cool, good to know. Um, just checking where we are. Okay, so on.